Our topic today is 4.8, Implicit Differentiation. That's on pages 206 to 212 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of differentiation based on slope as a rate of change. And our lesson objective, number one, to learn the difference between implicit and explicit differentiation. And number two, to learn how to differentiate implicitly. So thus far, all of our functions have been explicitly defined. That is, y has always been isolated for us. For example, when y equals x to the fifth power plus x to the negative three, we know what, that we've isolated y already. But an implicitly defined function is one where it's not possible to solve for y. So in this case, since we have a y cubed here and a y here, it would be um, basically impossible for us to just get y by itself on one side. So we have to use something called implicit differentiation when we are finding the derivative of these sort of functions. So to get that started, just gonna take a look at some notation. When we see d over dx, that just means we're gonna take the derivative with respect to x of x to the eighth power. And that's what that means. And we know that that is 8x to the seventh power. But when we have something like d over dx, so we're gonna take the derivative with respect to x of y to the fourth power, well, that means that we have to find the derivative of y to the four with respect to x. But we can't do that because there's no x's in this function. But what we can do is we can rewrite an equation like d over dx of y to the fourth power. We can rewrite it to look like uh, d over dx of y to the fourth power could be written as d over dy. So we're gonna take the derivative with respect to y of y to the fourth power, but then we also need to throw in a dy over dx. So remember, considering that these two dy's kind of cancel each other out, um, then you would still get the same thing, d over dx of y to the fourth power. So now when we take the derivative with respect to y of y to the fourth power, we get four y cubed. But this dy over dx has to stay along. So basically when you're implicitly deriving anything and you have a y where you're not supposed to, when you can't take the derivative of it, you need to make sure, you can take the derivative of it, but you have to make sure to throw in a dy over dx on the end. So for example, we're gonna find the derivative of 12y to the power of negative four over three. And that's with respect to x. Now we don't have x's in here, but we just learned that if we take the derivative of it anyway, and throw in a dy over dx will be a okay. So now we have 12 times negative four thirds of y to the negative uh, six, oh, sorry, negative seven over three, which makes that negative 16 y to the negative seven over three. And already I've forgotten to write in the dy over dx. So once you take the derivative of, derivative of it, you need to write in the dy over dx. And our second example here, we're gonna take derivative with respect to x. Um, of 9x squared minus 4y squared. So I can take the derivative with respect to x of 9x squared, that's just 18x. I don't need to put in the dy over dx because I'm actually talking about x's. But here I'd have to put in 8y dy over dx. So a couple more examples here. It says we need to find d over dx of x cubed y to the fourth. So these are two different functions. So we're gonna use our product rule. So again, here's another really good reason um, to use your, to write in what you're taking the derivative of and what you're not. So I'm gonna take derivative of x cubed and multiply it by y to the fourth power plus x cubed multiplied by y to the fourth power and its derivative. Now, this is the derivative, so technically we should have the d over dx in front of this whole thing because we haven't taken the derivative of it, of it yet. Now that we are gonna take the derivative of it, we can change it to 3x squared y to the fourth power plus x cubed times 4y cubed. And since we're taking the derivative of a y, when it says that we need to take it in respect to x, we need to plug in that dy over dx at the end. So as a final, when you're writing it, it would be 4x cubed y cubed dy over dx. If we're using the, the quotient rule here, we're gonna write it just like we normally would. We're gonna take the derivative of the top. Oops, it's to the fifth power. Um, multiplied by three y squared, the bottom, minus the top two x to the fifth power, multiplied by the derivative of three y squared, all over three y squared squared. So the derivative of two x to the fifth power is 10 x to the fourth power multiplied by three y squared minus two x to the fifth power multiplied by the derivative of three y squared, which is six y dy over dx, always remembering the dy over dx. And that's all over 
uh, nine y to the fourth power. And so to write it appropriately, we would uh, multiply everything together that we can. We get 30x to the fourth power y squared minus 12x to the fifth power y dy over dx all over 9y to the fourth. And we do need to simplify this. So there's we can take a 3 out of everything and we can take a y out of everything. So we get 10x to the fourth power y minus, um, if we divide that by by 3, we get 4x to the fifth power dy over dx, all divided by, if we divide that by 3y, we would get 3y cubed. So why implicit differentiation is actually useful. Um, now that we know how to implicitly differentiate something, it can make our life a lot easier when we're asked to solve certain types of questions compared to explicit differentiation. So it says find the slope of the tangent line to the curve x squared plus two uh, plus y squared sorry equals 169 at the point 12 comma negative 5 using both explicit and implicit differentiation. So first we'll do it the explicit differentiation way which is we need to solve for y. So we get y squared equaling 169 minus x squared and then we take the square root of both sides plus or minus 169 minus x squared all underneath the square root sign. Now it says that y is either going to be positive or negative. We can discard the positive part of this because our point here has a negative y value. So now when we take the derivative of this thing, because we're looking for the slope of the tangent line, now when we take the derivative we need to make sure that we can write this as negative 169 minus x squared to the power of a half. So our derivative is negative 1 half 169 minus x squared and using the chain rule we know that we also have to take the derivative of what's inside which is negative 2x. So now some things start to cancel out. We have the negative half and the negative 2 will cancel each other out entirely. So what we're left with in the in the very end we get y prime equaling x over the square root of 169 minus x squared because we had a negative one half as our exponent there. So now we need to find the slope of the tangent line. Well the slope of the tangent line is just if we plug in a 12 in for x. y prime is the slope of the tangent line so we get 12 over square root of 169 minus the square of 12 which is 144 and so y prime equals 12 over root 25 and that equals 12 over 5. So we were able to do that explicitly. Now you're going to find if we do it implicitly that it's going to take a fraction of the amount of time and something else very important is also going to happen. So if we're going to do it implicitly we're just going to take the derivative right off the bat of this function. So we get 2x plus 2y and that's dy over dx because we can't take the derivative of something with respect to x when there's only y's there. And the derivative of a constant, doesn't matter what it is, is always going to be zero. So now I'm going to solve for my dy over dx. And that's going to be negative 2x. This was multiplied by 2y, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2y. And then what happens is I can cancel out those two, so I just get negative x over y. Well, I know my x and my y, 12 and negative 5. So I get negative 12 over negative 5, which is the same thing as 12 over 5. So much easier to take the derivative of this thing implicitly as opposed to explicitly. And we didn't even need to consider whether this thing was going to be positive or negative on this side when we did it implicitly, because um, the math kind of took care of itself. And so implicit differentiation will allow you to do some things that you weren't able to do before with derivatives when you have both x's and y's in the same equation. So here's our example. It says find dy over dx of x cubed minus 3x squared y plus y squared equals 3 and the equation of the tangent line that's going to pass through this curve at the point negative 1 comma 4. So I'm going to take the derivative of this thing remembering that since I have x's and y's and I might have to use things like product rules and quotient rules and whatnot and to always throw in a dy over dx whenever I take the derivative of y. So my dy over dx or my derivative is going to be 3x squared now I need to take the derivative of this thing, which is the product of two different things. So the product of, uh, sorry, take the derivative of the first function, which is 6x multiplied by y plus 3x squared multiplied by the derivative of y, which is just 1. But since it was y, we have to throw in a dy over dx. 
And then we have plus y squared. Well, that's just 2y dy over dx. And the derivative of a constant is always 0. So now we have a pretty big mess over here. And we need to solve for dy over dx. So I'm going to move everything that doesn't have a dy over dx to the right-hand side. So that would be this 3x squared and this negative 6y, uh, negative 6y, 6xy, sorry. So this now becomes negative 3x squared. And this was a negative 6xy, so it's going to be positive 6xy. And what I have left is negative 3x squared dy over dx plus 2y dy over dx. Well, I can take out a greatest common factor, if you look, want to look at it that way, of dy over dx, and I'm left with negative 3x squared plus 2y equals negative 3x squared plus 6xy. Now, if I want to isolate dy over dx, I can just divide both sides by negative 3x squared plus 2y. So my derivative is actually negative 3x squared plus 6xy all over negative 3x squared plus 2y. Now, if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, that means I need to find an equation y equals mx plus b. I need the slope and I need the y-intercept. So the slope I can find by plugging in my x's and y's into this equation. And when I do that, I get negative 3 times uh, x squared, which is just positive 1, plus 6 times negative 1 times 4. And that's all over negative 3 times positive 1, again, plus 2 times 4. So what I get here is negative 3 minus 24 on top. And on the bottom, I get negative 3 plus 8. So I get negative 27 over 5. Well, now that I know my slope, negative 27 over 5, I can plug it into this equation. But I still need a value for b, so I'm going to plug in my x and my y value. I know the point that the line goes through. So I get 4 equals negative 27 over 5 times negative 1 plus b. And that means I get 4 equaling 27 over 5 plus b. So 4 minus 27 over 5 equals b and b would then equal, um, if I make this a common denominator of 5, that would be 20 over 5, so I get negative 7 over 5. So my final answer, y equals negative 27 over 5x, and my b value is minus 7 over 5. So in summary, when we implicitly differentiate something, we need to remember to put the dy over dx at the end, and that should be at the end of anything that was a y, I guess. All of our original differentiation rules apply, that would be the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. Implicit differentiation lets us answer questions with less work and in less time than if we needed to isolate y and then take the derivative of whatever we had. Remember that if you're asked to find dy over dx, then you need to manipulate your final expression and solve for dy over dx. So your assignment is on page 211 in your text. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.